Hello and welcome to section 2.6, Special Functions. Today we are going to be building off the previous day stuff when we are using equations in slope-intercept form. Also, this video will be split into two separate pieces just because I won't have enough time to get everything in I need to get in in 15 minutes. So, regardless, here we go. Starting with our vo first vocab word. Our first vocab word is a piecewise defined function which is exactly what it sounds like. It is a function that is written in two or more expressions. And so we start off with one right away where we have graph of the f of x and here are the two functions. Now it is stating the part of the domain that it is in, the part of the x values that it is in. So now how when, or when we do these problems, how do we do these problems? Well, the first thing you want to do is to bring it down. So I'm going to bring this whole thing down, down here. So it's going to be x minus 2 if x is less than negative 1. The very first thing after you bring it down, what we have to do is to put negative 1 in for this x. So negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. So now we found the point. Our point is now negative 1, negative 3. 3. So when we first plot this point, we go up, or we, sorry, we go over to the left 1 and down negative 3, and it is going to be an open circle. And why is it an open circle? Because our inequality is just a less than sign. And if it was equal to, then it would be filled in, but it is just less than. Now, looking at our slope, our slope is whatever is attached to our x whatever is in front of our x, and here we find our slope is just 1. So now from our open circle, let's put in our slope. Well, since it is 1, I would go up 1 and over 1, but we have to look at our domain. Our domain says that x is less than negative 1. Well, here is negative 1. We can't go past negative 1 going right because that's on the greater side. It wants to be less than. So we can only go this way. We can only shade on this side or put points on this side. So now, if our slope of 1, where would we put our slope? We would go to the left one and down one, left one and down one. Now we have a couple points that can be connected by a line. So we can go ahead and connect those points with a line, so I have an open circle with a line going through and an arrow on the end. Now, we're not finished because we need to do the second half of the piecewise function, so I'm going to put this part in blue. So again, to start off with, you go x plus 3, and if x now is greater than or equal to negative 1, once you rewrite it, the first thing we have to do is put negative 1, and for x, we add 3 to get a positive 2. So now our coordinate point is negative 1, 2. Now we put a point on negative 1, 2. And what kind of point are we going to put? We are going to put in a filled in circle because of the equal to sign. Right? We left the red one open because it was less than. Now this one we have to fill it in because it's equal to, because of the equal to underneath there. Now again, what is our slope for this line? Our slope is going to be whatever is attached to x, and there is a 1 attached to x. So now we go up 1, over 1, depending on our range, and we're looking at our, or sorry, looking at our domain, and our domain says that x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So again, here is that negative 1. It is greater than that negative 1, so we can only draw points on this side of the graph. So from our point, we can go up one over one, put a point, up one over one for the slope. Now we have a couple points that we can connect. So then go ahead and connect those points. So there is the graph of the piecewise defined function. Now we're asked to identify the domain and range. The domain is our x values, correct? So the domain equals the x's which equals, now, if I'm looking at my x values, are all of these x values used up where my cursor is? Yes, those x values are used from this line. How about going this way now, where my cursor is? Are all my x values used on this side? 
Yes, because my line is keep going up, 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 all the way until it's off the screen. So my domain va values are going to be real numbers, while my range are my y values. And so now we start down here, and we get to negative 3. Well, notice how we don't have a line from here to here. So now y is less than negative 3, and y has to be what? y has to be greater than or equal to, because it's a filled in circle, equal to, and what is this point here? 2, because we're at y2. So now we have the domain is all real numbers. The range is y is less than negative 3, and y is greater than or equal to 2. Now, let's work backwards. Now we're going to be given the graph of a piecewise defined function, and we're asked to write the expressions. Well, what I like to do is I like to break it down into um, separate lines. So I'm going to start with this blue line. You can start with the blue, purple, or red, but I'm going to start with the blue line. What we have to do is to put it into slope intercept form. So y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope and b is your y intercept. So on the blue line, let's first find our y intercept. So our y intercept is right there. b is going to be 3. Now, what is my slope? going to be? Well, I have an intercept here, and I have an intercept. It goes through a coordinate right there. So now I have two points. Well, what is my slope going to be? It's going to be down 1, 2 over 1, and it's going up from left to right. So my slope is going to be 2. Now, if your slope, if you can't find a coordinate plane or a parts of the grid that the line goes through, then you can just uh, pick your two favorite points on the line and then use your slope which is y minus y over x minus x to find your slope and then you can go on from there um, but since it's already given to us I'm going to use it just from the line and so now when I put this into my uh, expression I have y equals my slope is 2 x plus 3 and now, when is that though? We have to state our domain if, and then we have x is what? Well, we go ha or we have every number up until what? x is 1, and that's on the less than side of x is 1. So if x is less than 1, so here is one part of our piecewise function. Now, looking at the purple line, starting with our y-intercept, if we would continue this line over here, where would it cross? It would cross at 3. What is the slope of the purple line? I'm not going up any, but I'm going over. So my slope is 0 over 1, or just 0. So now let's put that into the line, or that into the expression, y equals. The slope is 0m plus 3, also known as y equals 3, and then we have to state the domain, if, and then how about our x's? If x is what? Here's where it starts. So if x is, and it's on the greater than side of 2, so if x is greater than 2. Now looking at the red line, y-intercept, if we would continue this line, it would go through where? It would have a y-intercept of 2. It has a slope of, goes down 1 over 1, has a slope of negative 1 because it's going down from right to left. Plugging it in, we have y equals a negative x plus 2. And what is our domain? If x is what bigger than here's one if x is greater than or equal to one and x is less than or equal to two now if you wanted to you don't have to but you could go 
f of x or y, so you could label this y, or you could go f of x, function notation, and then the brackets, which you saw on that first page, 2x plus 3, if x is less than 1, then your purple equation, y equals 3, if x is greater than 2, and then finally we have uh, negative x plus 2, if x is greater than or equal to 1, and x is less than or equal to 2. Now, we're going to get into some more vocab. A piecewise linear function is a function in which the equation for each interval is linear. And some examples of a piecewise linear function would be a step function, which is a piecewise constant function. Now, probably the most known of all the step function is the greatest integer function. And what we have is this guy right here, which is the greatest integer function. Um, the step function notation is these brackets in red, usually donated or denoted by brackets. So they'll either be uh, brackets or in our book, they're double bracketed. Um, what that means, the greatest integer function, what that means is to find the greatest integer less than or equal to x. So if it was 1.5, you would round down to 1. So if you want to think of it in different contexts, you're just rounding down. So the greatest integer function, all that means to you is to round down. It is the greatest integer less than or equal to x. So let's take a look at some of the examples. So if we have f of x equals the greatest integer function, we're putting that 2 in for this x. So it would be 2 would be in our greatest integer function. So um, f of 2, that really changes nothing. It would just be 2. Same thing with a negative 2. It would still be negative 2 because it's right at that whole integer. Now, though, if we went to 1.45 or 1 in 45 right in there, correct? Well, we would have to go back to the greatest integer less than or equal to, or we would just round down to 1. But we have to be careful with negative 1.5 because there's negative 1.5, right? We're coming from the left. What's the greatest integer less than? Or if we round down, it would be negative 2. Well, how about pi? Pi is 3.14. It's right there. We pass 3. We round down to 3. How about negative pi? It would be right there. It's really close to negative 3, yes, but we have to round down all the way to negative 4. And I'm going to stop the first video right here before we get into graphing uh, the greatest integer function. And we'll pick it up on the next video of graphing the greatest integer function and absolute values.